Is there anything you can do to save this? And when I say this, I'm talking to each and every one of you. Is there anything? Is there any, like, paint the scenario. Is there any way that he can get this back? Yes. How? They make the playoffs and they win a series or, God forbid, they win two series and they go to the NLCS. Yeah, this thing is salvageable. They would have to go on a run. Go on a run. If they wind up the year at 87 and 75 and then they win a series and they win another series and they're among the last four teams playing baseball. I mean, 87 and 75 means they go 38 and 20 the rest of the way. Right. I'm That's not saying incredible that incredible baseball. What I'm saying is that would be the kind of a run that could save it for mm -hmm. Farhan Zaidi. Okay. And you know, this dream rotation that we've all been waiting for turns out to be dreamy. And it's Ray and Snell and Webb and Harrison and maybe it's Birdsong, maybe Cobb shows up, maybe it still is Jordan Hicks, whatever. You go on a pitching run for the ages and you start winning games two to one, three to one, three to two. 3 nothing, 4 one and you go on that kind of a run, and you climb the standings, and you make the playoffs, and you win a series. I do think all of that would add up to him being able to survive it. But short of that, I think he's in real trouble. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's a long shot. Well, of course. No doubt. All right. So what would you do right now if you were him? Because the funny thing is, is we're sitting here, uh, this is a traditional moment where the Giants are in a sell spot. They are six games under 500. They have assets that people would really want, assets who are expiring. Quick aside, a lot of you have got to stop yelling names out that don't make sense right now. I hear this, there's way too much of this. Like Logan Webb. Yeah, like a lot Trade of Webb. <laughs> Uh, no. I think there's a lot of people that are having a hard time understanding what sell means. Sell doesn't mean I'm so mad I'm going to napalm this entire clubhouse and start from scratch. That means you're waiting another five, six, seven years. What are you doing? No, we, no, 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 no. People who are, uh, are young and under contract for many years to come and are good, that's who you don't trade, okay? So stop throwing out the entire roster when you go, here's who the Giants should sell. But if you want to talk about Blake Snell and you want to talk about Conforto and Chapman and maybe some of the re the relievers, the reason Duvall is in there and, and Logan Webb is not is because Duvall has pitched very poorly and has rubbed people the wrong way. And therefore, he's a carrot that maybe you could get something for because you don't want him to be a big part of your future. That's why you hear people putting Duvall in there, including me. But you're in a very traditional sell spot. But what you just said, I think, is what most people believe, and I do too, which means that, Farhan, if you do sell, you're also selling yourself. You are completing your fate. You are finishing the picture. You are closing the casket. Sorry, I don't want to get too dramatic here. Jeez. You're, you're, it's done. You're admitting long-term failure, not short-term. You're admitting, and when has Farhan ever done this now? You're admitting your way didn't work. It didn't work. Well, unless he gets assurances that he can sell and keep his job, and that would be behind closed doors, and I don't get yep. the sense that that's going to be the way that this goes. And I don't think either way that he would be allowed the leniency to go out there and buy. So if you go to the front office and say, look, you know, I, I want to buy this player. I want to bring in Jazz Chisholm. We need to shortstop, and he can put us over the hump. He already told you that the team would let him know if they were going to play well enough to be a buy candidate, and they have not played well enough to be a candidate to go out there and buy a piece. So I'm with you. Would you go out there and then sell and basically give up on the year? You could probably get a lot back especially because there aren't that many sellers, true sellers out the there. Seller's market. Right. And you have three or four players who legitimately could go out there and help. Lamont Wade Jr. could go out there. A guy who was good on base. He could go be a Yankee. And Snell could maybe be a Yankee. Or Doval could go somewhere and be a back-end guy. Not necessarily a closer, but go be a high-leverage eighth-inning pitcher uh, for somebody. Robbie Ray is a guy who's getting healthy at the right time. Maybe he's somebody you could sell. Chapman, great defensive infielder, somebody who can 
theoretically provide you some power. I mean, each one of these is, is on its own, its own conversation, to be honest with you, because that's how teams will look at it. I know as a Giants fan, you may sit there and go, Snell and Chapman and Wade and Doval and Robbie Ray and Alex Cobb, or each of them carry their own situation contractually. I'd be shocked if the Giants traded Lamont Wade. Um, he's got another year on his deal, and he's incredibly, incredibly cheap. So I would be shocked if the Giants traded Lamont Wade. Plus, you don't have a lot of first basemen in the organization. Right, right. as evidenced by when he got hurt. Right. Right. So, the, so okay, who's, who's cheap? Who's controlled beyond this year? Robbie Ray is very expensive over the next two years. Now, you also have control of him over the next two years. Ah, if... He opts in, which you think he, he has two years at 25 mil per for two more years after this year, but he's got to opt into it. Okay, well, is he going to opt into it? I would guess it's probably likely. I don't know that there's anything Robbie Ray could do just for the rest of this year that's going to make another team want to sign him to a two-year $50 million contract. That feels risky for a guy coming off of TJ. So I don't know how much of an appetite there's going to be for Robbie Ray. Michael Conforto's an easy one, but what are you going to get back? Not much. Blake Snell is probably the prize. That's the one who right now is pitching in a way that would make him get a nice contract in the offseason, opt out of his contract to be a free agent, but therefore, again, that's a rental. So what are you going to get back there? I mean, the irony in this whole thing is if you do sell, you're trusting Farhan Zaidi, ironically, right. to be the one who goes out and assesses who the great prospects are that you're getting in return. And people will celebrate if the Giants sell, and you're going to get a name back that you've never heard of and may never be a Giant. So I that's why I would predict this. I think that selling is the right thing to do. Buying makes even less sense. But both of them sort of present a conundrum to the current front office. So what you're going to get is neither. Or little dabbles of both. That's probably more likely. Michael Conforto for whatever. And then, you know, your marginal acquisitions also, like they've already done the last couple of days. Yes, and he's big on little dabbles of both. Yeah. That's kind of what he's always done is dabbles of both. And I think you're right when... It comes to buying, that makes less sense because really the math is there, but can you make the math matter? Probably not. You haven't shown any ability to go on a real run. You've won four in a row twice, and outside of that, you haven't had any real stretch of 11 of 14 or you know 17 and 5 over 22. You haven't had that real block of three weeks of like, wow, okay, this is who you are. This is who you could be. You're on a run. You're climbing the standings. Let's ride. Or as you like to say, it's time to boogie. It's time to boogie. And they are yet to be able to boogie. They're a step slow. They're <laughs> out of rhythm, whatever you want to say. So the buying feels like a fool's errand. But the sell, you don't have a guy in Farhan Zaidi, I think, who has the the gravitas or the comfortability to go out there and sell. Unless he goes to the Johnsons again and says, hey, guys, like he did last year, look, here's my plan. We're going to spend. We're going to get the young guys up here. We're going to be better does he have the ability to go to the front office again and say, look, I want to sell, but here's my plan for next year. P.S. Keep me around for another year. I feel like we're close, guys. Please don't fire me. Let me sell. I don't think that they're going to let him sell at this point because he's in a lot of trouble. Well, he needs both. He needs both. What he needs is, for instance, to pull off a Blake Snell trade and get a prospect that people are told that we should be excited about. And then he needs the rest of the team to go out and play well and, and, and like play really well. And in theory, there are enough starting pitchers that that could happen. That could happen. Nobody knew that Hayden Bird, like what if Hayden Birdsong just gets a rotation spot for the rest of the year? What if he does well with it? And you put Birdsong with uh, the return of Cobb and, uh, and, and, and you've still got Robbie Ray and you've still got Kyle Harrison and you've still got Logan Webb. Like, he could sell and then still put out a product that, in theory, has the exact same opportunity to, quote-unquote, do the math yep. as what they yep. would with Blake. So that's what he needs. That's what he needs, and it's very, very unlikely. You're threading you, the needle there. Yeah, you do know what's going to happen, right? Oh, 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 they're winning these four games. 
They're not winning all four. They're winning the four games. Well, they're, they're going to win three of the four. They're going to win four games, at least three. Solely so that we get back here Monday and there's, yeah, there's going to be yelling and screaming about it because we're going to go into Monday and what is it? Midday Tuesday? Yep. Is that what yep. it is? One o'clock, I think. One o'clock on Tuesday. Yeah. So they'll be yelling and screaming about it. And, and no matter what happens against the Colorado Rockies on the road, I mean, you want to talk about something that should not shape your opinion. It would be what you do against the Colorado Rockies here at Oracle Park. That should not shape your thinking. But but it might. But it will. <laughs> no, it will if they sweep it. Of course they're going to sweep it. Yeah, I mean, of course they are. That's I mean that's kind of foolish to even think. Of course they are because they don't. First of all, they've had trouble with Colorado this year relative to how bad Colorado is, and a lot of that's been there. Not here they didn't. And you have a doubleheader, and the likelihood of sweeping Uh a doubleheader is not great. I don't know the exact math of it, but it feels like at least 75% of doubleheaders are splits, and you know 25% are sweeps. So you're asking for four wins in three days as a team that hasn't really been able to do that for the most part all year. I would take the under on four wins against Colorado. I'm just trying to, it's an election year, so I'm trying to fact check you right now. Have they had trouble with the Colorado Rockies? Relative to what the Rockies are, well, prior, was my statement. Prior, prior to the series last week where the Giants lost two of three, the Giants were five and one against the Rockies. So this year they are six and three, and they are three and oh here in this building. They are three and oh against the Rockies. Against the Rockies here in and San Francisco. Okay. And in fact, if you remember back, that's when. Uh, remember how you said the bit longest win streak all year has been four games? It happened twice, and it was right up against each other. It was in a period of nine games. They had two four-game win streaks with a loss tucked in between, and that one loss was that crazy game in Pittsburgh where Duvall just completely cratered, and they lost in 10 innings, 7-5. to five. Marco Luciano's kicking things over at shortstop. Remember that? Okay, they had won four in a row going into that road trip. Then they lost that game, and they won four more in a row right after it. They'd won eight of nine, and tucked into that was a three-game sweep of the Rockies. And in those three games, Dan Dibley, they scored 28 Ooh, runs. Oh, boy. 28 Ooh. runs. They haven't scored 28 runs since the break. That's over nine per game. It's huge. Oh, they go sweep this series. You watch. Care to make a little bet on that? Sure. I, need, right. I, I probably need like a tiny bit of odds. Oh, boy. There Come you on. Go. I'm, I'm calling a four-game win streak in, in You've 72. You've said it seven times. Yeah. And you need to hedge with odds? I mean. We could talk about it. We could talk. I'm just Let's negotiating. It it's just my first offer. I like it. <laughs> All right. How's everybody doing? We doing okay? It's a Friday. Happy Friday. 